Four mathematical book is actually a book written by Eric and Joel Rourke, um, who's more computational geometry, and it's geometric folding algorithms. Um, it's a, it includes the book, if you look right here, this turtle is actually a fold and cut problem. Okay? And this fold and cut problem I've been talking about, how does it relate to, to Eric? That was a, that he proved in his PhD dissertation that any combination of straight lines and points, there exists a set of folds, perhaps infinite, where if you fold it up, all those dots and lines will co will be on um, will make a straight line. You just cut straight across there, and you'll cut it out. So this fold, these fold and cut problems are examples of what you know of that you can actually do anything you design. You can design origami to do the fold and cut for it. Okay. He also has many other um, theorems in origami, but we're not going to go into those right now. Um, the butterfly also has a lot of, you can see a lot of angle bisectors and perpendiculars. Um, the swan, similarly, you got angle bisectors, you got perpendiculars. I got 20 or so copies of each. You can have them. So let's get back to the talk. <coughs> All right, so how else can we design origami with mathematics? Well, we just saw one way we can use fold and cut to do it. All right, so Robert Lang has this um, program, and I'm blanking on, what it's called, on the name of it right now. It'll come back to me. Um, for designing origami. So what do you think this is? Square. It's a square, OK. You're, now you're going to be the one that gets the, uh, gets the trick question. <laughs> you just volunteered for it. All right. Um, so if you look at this. Yeah? That's the crease pattern, right? That's the crease pattern, yes. The different colors of the mountain and the valley. Uh, something, yeah, something like that. Um, so looking at this, I see a body here. I see something pretty technical over here and pretty technical over here. So let me show you what it is. It's an hour. So if I had to guess, the technical parts in the corner, those are the feet. <coughs> and then you got a body and then you got the wings. Okay? So another one made by the same program. Um, now the circles, circles represent body parts here. Okay, and that's how it's designed. It's a circle packing that tells you how to do stuff. And then you've got these parallel things along the outside that allows you to move it together. So if I'm looking at this, I look at a body, I look at maybe a head up here, something up here, something over here, maybe some of these are legs or something. Okay? Well, that's a good way to put a bug. All right. So this is indeed a bug. But not only that, it's a scorpion. And not only that, that's a ruler. Oh, it's about what, two inches long? Yeah. All right. One more. What do you think this is? Yes, wow. good. All right, has wings. So if I look at this, this might be, I'm not sure if this is a head or this is a head. Maybe these are something like wings. Um, it is a bird. All right. Go ahead and hide this. OK? Now, the crease pattern that's on there is the rough estimate. Is the rough estimate. It gets the body parts in the right places. Then it takes the artist to really sculpt it into something that looks reasonable. See these folds in the wing? Let me show you where they are. These are wing folds. You see them? You got a bunch of almost parallel things. And then on the wings, you can see that there's a flat, 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 flat. Those are wing folds there. All right, so now I'm going to talk about rigid origami. Okay, so I think I'm going to 
and cheat. Here's my notes. I'm going to make sure I don't. Uh... Okay. So, let me show you. That's Robert Lang in front of that. Now, let me tell you about this. That is a that's a lens for a tel it's a, actually it's a prototype for a lens for a telescope. It's made of glass. It folds. Okay, so what's important about this? Well, has anyone here tried to fold glass? <laughs> I have. I, you, can, you can all see this later. I've tried to fold glass. What happens when you fold glass? If you can't bend glass. So you want to send this up to space, all right? You don't want to send it as the big telescope lens. You want to send it compact. Well, in, when we had when the shuttles were operating, you had to fit in the shuttle, right? So you had to make it smaller to fit in the shuttle. So you want to have something that folds up, gets launched into space, and then when it gets to space, it can unfold, and then you can use it. Now, when you're doing this, you don't want to bend it because what happens if you bend this while it's in space? <laughs> that, NASA gets in trouble. <laughs> it's almost as bad as losing a sat losing a Mars. <laughs> right? So this is rigid origami. What rigid origami means is we're not allowed to bend the paper. Think of it as folding sheet metal. Sheet metal doesn't bend except where you got a hinge. And you said you, you've done it, so. It can't stretch. It can't stretch. It can't bend. It can't do anything like that. Right. Where, what another application of this? Anyone know what that is? That's a stem. What it, so what does that do? It goes into your, you, it's put into your bloodstream to prop open a blood vessel. It goes in small. When it gets to the spot it's supposed to be, it unfolds. But you want it to, it's made out of metal or something like that. You don't want it to bend or collapse. You want it to be a pretty sturdy thing to keep your blood vessels and arteries open. So, and stay unfolded. Yes, yeah, staying unfolded is also part of it. Um, but that's a rigid, Operation because you don't want it, well, you don't want your blood vessels to fold up upon themselves. That would be bad, right? All right. All right. So next one. All right. I'll take any volunteer. This one, you're going to be, you're going to lose this competition. So <laughs> I need someone who's prepared to lose. All right. Now. <laughs> All right, you you're the one you, you spoke up before. You get you get the uh, losing position. All right, so so now I have to pretend to be old. I have to pretend to be really old. You know, you know, back in my day we had to walk uphill both ways, and you know we didn't have these newfangled GPS or phones or anything. What do we have? We had maps. And anyone who's had maps in a car, what happens to the maps um, after they've been left in the car for a little bit? They look kind of like this, okay? They have holes in it, weird places. They've been folded wrong. All right, you can unfold this one. Your job is to fold this back up. So while he's folding it up, I'm going to give an alternate map. I'm going to even give you a, well, a, a head start. How's it going over there? Actually, that one, I take good, good care of it. So it, it's not too bad to fold up. Come on. Can't go faster. I'm, I'm folding and unfolding them right away. What's taking so long? Oh, no, that's not even right. You didn't even get the uh, cover on the outside. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, the maps are always like that. <laughs> All right, so what's the problem here? So thank you. So you lost. You're going loose. <laughs> The problem is you can't fold a map like this all up all at once. If you try to do that, it's a non-rigid fold, and it, the paper hates it. The paper wants to stay flat. If you try to do it all at once, it says, no way, I'm not doing it, and it rips. And that's what causes well, the rips. This one, this is called a mirror map fold. Um, there's a few map, you can find, you can sometimes find maps in Japan that are, that are made like this. So what's interesting about this, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to pass it around, is that the lines are not orthogonal. They're, diag they're zigzags. So what this means, so what happens here? This 
is a flat piece of paper. This is actually made out of cardstock, so it really doesn't like to bend. Okay? So it's always staying flat, but what else is happening here is there's actually a one parameter family of motions that are allowed by the folding pattern. So you probably haven't heard that language. What it means is that you could study it with calc one. One variable, you only need one variable to open <coughs> to figure out the position of this map. Okay? So when you want to fold it and unfold it, don't force it because then you'll reverse on the folds and that. So you're going, to, you're going to hold opposite corners. All right? When I say opposite corners, when it's folded up, you're going to hold an exterior corner and an interior corner of the other side. Then you just pull apart and push it together. Okay? You do this all day. <laughs> a lot easier than maps in a car. If it's a one parameter family, why can't you hold adjacent corners? And, and, and get the forces aren't right. I mean, it's one parameter family when you're holding those two corners. Right? Sorry. You can hold the other corners and it'll still work. It's just, it doesn't. It's not a perfect, it's not a perfect uh, realization of the model. You'll get the tops to separate, but the bottoms will still be crunched up a bit. Try it when you get it. It won't work as well. Why do we care about this? Well, first, it makes for really cool maps. <laughs> okay? Um, if anyone goes to Japan, look for maps like that. Most, most of the maps like that, actually, the folding pattern is the diagonals are really close to vertical. So it's not as, that's a little more, um, uh, let's pronounce the uh, diagonals. But it, these fold and unfold. Where else is this useful? Spacecraft. Remember, I promised that this was going to be about spacecraft. All right? You have solar panels. Solar panels, do they bend? No, solar panels don't like to bend. What happens? Everyone, you get fired. If you bend your solar panels, you get fired. <laughs> All right, so they want to, you send, a, you send your satellite up, it's got to have your solar panels folded up. When you get to space, they open up. All right, why is a mirror map fold nice for this? And they actually, um, I'm not sure if it's actually used or a prototype. Sorry for the quality of these pictures, but it's best I can find. This is actually a prototype of what it could be. Uh, and that's actually using a mirror map fold. All right. Why would this be interesting? Well, it's rigid. It doesn't break the, it doesn't break the solar panels. It also is a one parameter family. Um, you're, you're angling, <laughs> you gotta put a picture on the floor. Uh, it's a one parameter family. So what that means is you only need one or two motors on the spacecraft to open up the solar panels. Motors are heavy. Fewer you can carry, the more you can, the less it costs, and the more of other equipment you can put on them. It also, it has one, it can't get stuck anywhere because it's a one parameter family. You start it most moving, it'll open all the way up. No problem. It'll close all the way down. Right, and so here's a picture of people working on solar panels like this. Sorry for the quality, it's the best I can find. But if you notice here, you can sort of see some of the zigzags that are going on. This is built out on your map fold. All right. So now we're done with part one of the talk. We've done the pretty pictures part. So let's do some mathematics. Okay. Um, before I start, let's start with some origami basics. So a map and fold is a dash, dash, dash dot, dash dot, dash dot. What this means is that you fold it away from you, okay? Um, if you were an ant crawling on the surface, the ant would come towards you and then go away from you. The dash, 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 so I think of the, in the map and fold, I think of the uh, dots as peaks, so it's like a mountain range. All right, and Dash, dash, dash is the valley. You fold it towards you. If you're an ant, it would go down to a valley and then come back up. Okay. Um, I think that's the river. The dash is on the river flowing through that. All right. So that's our origami basics. Now let's do some math. 